there's a lot of pride involved. We started back in 1968. It was a one-man shop for a few years. Later on, my two sons joined me, and by February of, of 18, completed 50 years in the same seat. During those whole 50 years, I never one time built a car of my own, like a hot rod, and really didn't have any, uh, any hobby cars until the, like the last 10 years of it. You're just busy taking care of business. I've always had a passion for the Indy car in that era, because that's what we grew up with. I think that's where that, that started. My father was a race car driver, a Northwest champion, and as we grew up, Memorial Day weekend, we were raised to be at the radio listening to the Indy 500. It becomes a fever within you at some point, and you just love it. My time of watching it as a youth was the late 40s, early 50s, and I watched them all from that point. That was the time that was exciting to me. So to have this car, that's what works for me. The piece of your past that you reach for every now and again. You think of your dad, you think of your parents, you think about listening to the race. I specialize in early Ford stuff, banjo rear ends, 39 boxes, flatheads. It just happened to be everything that was in this particular car put into it throughout its history. Just dumbass luck that the car got brought to me. My name is Marshall Woolery. I own Thunderfield Rod and Custom in Tacoma, Washington. I restore cars. Yeah, I restore cars. That's pretty much what I do. Uh, Custom metal fabrication, bodies, chassis, uh, custom one-off, whatever you, whatever you, you can draw me a picture, I can build it for you. John bought an Indy car that just happened to be powered by a flathead, which is a really odd thing. And in this area, there's not a whole lot of people who are known for flatheads, and I've got a pretty good reputation for working on flathead cars, and nostalgia style cars. Normal circumstances, I've never worked on an Indy car or know anything about Indy cars at all. Since then, we took it apart and I started doing some research on it to, because I'd never worked on an Indy car before and I wanted to make sure I was doing things right and everything was on, you know, on the spot for what was supposed to be in that car in 1948 and nine. Chris and I are very good friends. We've been friends for a long time. Anytime I do research on something that I know nothing about, Chris is basically my walking encyclopedia. He fiends on it, so the natural person for me to call and ask is Chris, because he loves doing research. He runs a shop and I write for magazines and he's usually finding stuff that I can write about. I would say that's really how I, I found out about this. It was basically, you know, you wouldn't believe what I get to work on next. Old race cars never die. They just keep going on in other forms. Even if some car gets absolutely totaled and, and somebody dies in it, all the bits and pieces go into other cars. So it always survives. This car is a great example of that because it's been several race cars. It started out 
as a joint venture between Harry Miller and uh, E.L. Cord. And they designed this V16 engine for a, a passenger car that never came to pass because of the Great Depression, among other things. So they had this orphan engine laying around, so they built several chassis. Two of them got big eight-cylinder engines, one got a V16, and that's the origins of this car, really. So the car came out in about 1931 as a race car. Raced in 32, 33 again, was not competitive, was altered, a shortened wheelbase, another engine put in it, and then it competed again in 1935. The car sold to a number of people over the years. They in turn went out racing with it, doing different things with it. After the war, it got narrowed and completely rebodied. Another engine put in it, the engine that's in it right now, presumably. So, in a sense, this car is several race cars. Not just one race car, but several race cars. Its parts have gone on to other things. It's acquired parts from other cars. In a sense, it's a little bit like a, the ship of Theseus, where everything is kind of changed and everything in the car is changed to the point where is it still the original thing or is it something else altogether? But it still is the original thing in some capacity because it still has have some of those parts and the provenance that comes with that. When John bought the car, somehow it acquired a title. So now it has a legal registration and a legal license, which technically makes it a street car. When he told me he wanted to drive it between his house and his shop every once in a while, I thought he was nuts. And pretty much he is. He, he just drives it and has fun with it. It's the damnest thing I've ever seen. Well, there's a fine line there between street legal and street illegal. The car technically is street illegal, but we did register the car and it is licensed and insured and we've, we've met all the obligations. So our feeling is that, okay, we'll use it on occasion and have some fun. There's no fuel pump on that car. So with your left hand, you're onto the steering wheel. You're pumping fuel to the car. You're also grabbing the brake handle when you need to. It's busy in the cockpit. The car wants to hunt. You know, the car is made to turn left. The car is made to be on a smooth surface. But when you're on the streets here in Seattle, you're hunting all over the place. And you're over 50 miles an hour. You can really feel it in the car. The car feels like it wants to go in a number of directions. And it's almost like you're hanging on. So are you controlling it or is it controlling you? But it's a great feeling. And it's a great exhilaration of speed. It's what you look forward to doing sometimes when you get up in the morning. It serves a purpose to give you a place to go and do things now that I'm retired, and I think everybody needs that. I don't know what age that hits anybody in particular, but for me, for right now, it's great. It's an emotional high to be able to get in that car and go have fun, drive around a track, drive on the streets. I drive it home once in a while. Pull up in the neighborhood, pull it into my garage. It's just fun. I enjoy life doing what I'm doing right now. I'm 75 years old. I'm happy doing this. And uh, I'm happy having a hobby like this that has also become a passion. <laughs>